In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, Kate and David talk about some of their favorite non-dungeon dungeons. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Another Zelda Podcast. I am Kate May, here as always with my wonderful co-host, Dave Geiser. How you doing, buddy? Hi there, Kate. Hi. I miss hearing your voice. Aww. It's been many episodes. It's where I've been, been a while. I've been running around doing uh, Midwest Gaming Classic stuff and other things, and it's nice to come home, quote unquote. Yeah. And actually, I, I, I said that like five, six episodes ago, but every time I drive up to Milwaukee, Back in season one, I'd get a little nervous. You know, kind of spoke to that in the past. Now I just get relaxed. I'm just like, let's go do this. Welcome back to the dining room. <laughs> like, <laughs> ah, the dining room. It's true. I am so okay with it. Um, so yeah, I'm well. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And as always, Milo is so excited to see you <laughs> or anyone in my house. I don't think he cares for the baritone voice. No, Milo gets a little freaked out. He's okay with uh, people in our house as long as they don't speak. Um, so when, when Dave is here, I, uh, Dave was telling me before we started recording that, um, we had a listener reach out and say, where's, where's Milo? I don't, yeah, I haven't heard true. Milo in a while. Well, Milo has a, a peanut sized brain, so he forgets who Dave is. So then when <laughs> Dave comes back to the house, he's cool, like kind of sniffing around and exploring a little. And as soon as Dave starts talking, he's like, oh my God, a man. <laughs> ah! And then he runs away. So he might wander in once his peanut brain resets itself again yeah. and he's not scared anymore and he'll come back in and maybe <laughs> maybe meow and say hi. We'll see. But Sounds good. He's here too. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. It's a beautiful day today, it if I may. It is. It is a lovely day. So after this, going to do some bike riding, I think. Ooh, I'm and, jealous. And stuff like that. But before that, mm-hmm. we have some important things to discuss. Indeed. Uh, today's topic at hand, uh, which was suggested by someone on Discord, and we'll give them a shout out, um, is favorite non-dungeon dungeons. Yeah, yeah. So this was, um, we had, as the as our season two schedule is coming together, Kate, we did kind of predict out the whole season, but then always there's little changes and little modifications. Mm-hmm. And so we had this weird thing where we had a little hole of one episode in our season. And you and I talked for about a week. We're like, gee, what should it be? What should it be? You know, we've done some top tens. We've done some Mm -hmm. some things. Um, And after about a week, both of us were like, if I may, we were like, boy, we are just flummoxed. I'm not sure. We're not like getting inspiration on what the topic should be. Maybe because we know what the next 10 or 20 topics are. Like it's, you know, it's, I'm not sure. It's hard to think of something extra in addition to all the other stuff we have planned and have done. Yeah. So just a day or two ago of this recording, because we had to squeeze this one in quickly, quickly, because there's vacations coming up next weekend. Mm -hmm. I went on to Discord and I quickly reached out to the entire channel, all 90 plus people. I was a little (laughs) nervous about that. I hashed, not hashtagged, I at replied everyone, you Uh know, and Discord actually gave me a message that was like, you're going to message more than 90 people when you do this. Are you okay with that? And I was like, I feel like this is the only time I'd be okay with it. Uh And I shout out a little message saying that we were kind of like open. We needed a quick idea of an episode. Mm -hmm. And Beck Phillips, actually, many people gave us a lot of great, um, great, great ideas within minutes. Honestly, I left Discord open and it just started dripping in blink, 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 (laughs) blink over the next hour. And we got some amazing ideas. And many of those I've logged in our library. And if we can return to them, we will. Yeah. But um, Beck Phillips here said, quote, "Uh, what about favorite non-dungeon dungeons? Meaning things like the Pirate Fortress in Majora's Mask or the Ice Cave in Ocarina of Time, places that aren't quite dungeons, but kind of are. And it actually got four Triforce likes uh, from other people. <laughs> so, yeah. And I thought that was a great idea, too. And Beck, the, also picking it was an idea where we could, um, like, if someone said, like, well, why don't you research the making of Skyward Sword? You'd be like, oh, boy, no, we need a month or two to put notes together for that. Right, right. This is kind of one where we could just think of things and just say, yeah, this probably counts and this maybe counts. It's a yeah, quick fun just, one. Yeah. I'm sorry, well, pardon me. Little top list. So um, I did have a little bit of a harder time with this after, you know, initially really liking the idea and being like, oh, yeah, this will be easy. It got difficult only because maybe the semantics of what is a non-dungeon. I got caught up on that, too. Would be, you know, disagreed with from you or our listeners or who knows myself. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I would fight myself about it. Like, is it a dungeon? Is it not a dungeon? Is it a mini dungeon? Is it just what is it? So we'll see what our 
our qualifiers here. I agree. At first, are. I thought, oh, so sorry. At first, I thought, um, like, okay, well, is it a place that you like the ice cavern that still uses keys, but it's not a dungeon or still pulls up a dungeon map? And I think those that's great criteria, mm -hmm. but I do have some here that I think don't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Before we get into all that, though, I do have some listener feedback to As get to. As always, let's hear it. Yes, 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 yes. Now, uh, let's see. Well, let's start right off with that fun one that you engaged with. Uh, yeah. SM underscore travel underscore photography. I think this was over on Instagram, actually. This is actually. on Instagram, yeah. Uh, SM underscore travel underscore photography said, messaged us and said, Hi, just to let you know, finish the London Marathon in four hours and 44 minutes. And I promise if I finished 30 seconds earlier, your podcast would have said, okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you to your Zelda podcast for helping me raise over 3,075 pounds or over $4,000 for WWF. Great job. Keep up the good work. Also, any mention on the pod with you uh, with your influence would be great. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Well, then, Kate, you replied, and I will read it if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I only take cat pics. You said, SM underscore travel underscore photography. Fantastic job. We will definitely shout you out on a future episode. Smiley face, smiley face. <laughs> SM travel photography then replied, and then I'll be finished. Awesome pace. Have my marathon next week, raising money for WWF, and have four Zelda podcasts to keep me going. Yeah. I, that last one was first, actually. And then did I read this backwards? Bottom up. Bottom up. So they were gonna, yeah. So they were going oh boy. to. So they were, yeah. They were. They initially reached out and said, "I'm going to run the London Marathon," and I have <laughs> podcast listened to, and I'm like, "That's cool." And then they were like, and then they gave a an update, like saying, "Hey, just so you know, I finished," and and that was so cool. Like I don't know, so I don't run marathons, but I have run a couple half marathons, and. I cannot listen to people talking when I'm running. Like okay. I need music. Uh, you need a beat. I, I need a beat. I need. I run to the beat of the music. I have playlists that are 165 to 170 beats per minute because yep. that's my optimal running pace. I hear you. I can't listen to people talking. So the idea that someone wanted to listen to me slash us talking for four, almost five hours, I commend you because I would not be able to do that. So... That's awesome, and that's really cool to imagine someone on the other side of the world almost yeah. listening to me while doing something amazing. Indeed. Now, I know, yeah, you've gotten into running within the last year or two quite a bit, in fact. I've mm -hmm. seen on your Instagram account. And I run a little bit. I'm not a very good runner. I'm much more of a biker. Mm -hmm. And when I do, and I love to bike, I love to bike long distance and all of that. I will admit sometimes if I'm out on the road for a couple hours, I will pull up some podcasts and listen to them. Sure. But if I'm really going, for, if I'm doing something long distance and I'm, I know I'm going to be out there for a couple hours, podcasts are fine. But if I'm doing like a sprint where I'm trying to get in a certain number of miles within a half an hour or something mm -hmm. like that, it's true. Uh, music with a certain beat is is helpful. Yeah. So I've gone both ways with it. I've, I mean, I've had friends that run marathons that have listened to that listen to audiobooks too. Like oh, sure. one of them listened to like the entire Harry Potter series over the course of their like training and an actual marathon. So it can be done. I just can't do it myself. But I just thought that was a really, really awesome comment. So congratulations on finishing in that time and raising that money. That's awesome. You're amazing. I can't do a marathon. So I'm always impressed with anyone that can do that. I thought it was super cool. So also, also, I'm noticing here as I look at our feedback, we have like four replies about our favorite Zora's episode. And why don't I just hit all four of them right now? Sure. So first, in no particular order, uh, Anna Loves Crafts, who has messaged us in the past, she mentioned, I believe over on YouTube, she said, um, about uh, about 48 minutes into the episode, she was replying to our comment about the Windfish song showing up in Majora's Mask. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the Ballad of the Windfish, mm -hmm. and you were like, oh, I get that reference. I'm so happy I do. Yeah. She said, unfortunately, their Ballad of the Windfish is completely different from the one you guys know, I think. <laughs> Come on, Nintendo. You had a real opportunity. Wow. So they call it the Ballad of the Windfish, but it is not the melody. <laughs> <clears throat> Which, when we play Majora's Mask, we'll have to pay attention. I th yeah. you know, that'll be next season. Yeah. Uh, Audie uh, over on YouTube commented and said, "I think the I think either the Zoras or the Gorons are my favorite race in the games. The OGs. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Super cool. Pulling up the next one. Synonymous, who has spoken to us in the past about some things. Um, Synonymous said here about, again, commenting on favorite Zoras. Uh, Liked as soon as I got the notification. No other podcast even comes close to keeping my attention. But maybe that has something to do with how great your personalities are. Ooh, I didn't actually oh. read this all the way through. Oh. <laughs> your personalities complement each other. Your videos have actually made me go back and play A Link to the Past for the Game Boy Advance, and I decided to make my own video just going through what Link has to overcome in order to complete his quest. I can't remember if you brought it up on another video, but I like the idea of reoccurring characters. Could be a potential video topic. Hmm. 
Cool. Yeah, I think I did click over to Synonymous's channel, and maybe we'll throw a link in our Twitter or something. Yeah. Um, where he or she put together some pretty cool stuff about a link to the past. Very cool. And I'm pulling up my notes in a different way these days. Here we go. Uh, last but not least, Krillin Dude uh, over on uh, on YouTube as well. Wow, a lot of activity on YouTube, I think. Um, have you guys thought of possibly doing an episode on your favorite cutscenes? This is still commenting on favorite Zoras. Mm. I love the one in Twilight Princess with all the dark links that and falling Ilya, LOL. Mm-hmm. I never noticed till now, but the interlopers mentioned by Lanayru are the tw- Twilly people, which means the Hyrule Civil War in the Hy- in Hyrule, the interlopers that were banished were the Twilight. Zelda's lore is crazy. <laughs> That's true. But yeah. Those those cutscenes can be really, really, really cool. Some of my favorite parts in the game is just kind of sitting back and watching. Especially that one. That one is like definitely up there because it is the weirdest, creepiest thing ever. Um, yes, I agree. It is and it's also kind of fun. Like there's a lot more connections in Twilight Princess than I ever realized. I thought it was a little bit off on its own, but when I learned that it's the same Ganondorf from Ocarina and how, mm-hmm. you know, every Zelda game definitely, and Nintendo has made this comment, or IG Anuma certainly has made this comment, that each game, they really think of a story and a mechanic first, and then they make a game around that, and then kind of, for, you know, try to make it fit into the timeline best they can. Essentially, right. it's the game first. So many times these games come from an original space, but when it, but even if it is... Uh, retcon. I almost said retrospect. Even if it is retconned a little bit, I mm-hmm. love it when there are these little connections like that from game to game to game. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, now I just want to play Twilight Princess again. I always want to play that <laughs> game. I was um, when I was researching for like this and our other episode that we're recording today. I you know was coming across screenshots of Twilight Princess and everything, and just that like floaty feeling goldeny color of yeah. a lot of it i was just like oh it's so pretty i want to play it again <laughs> like- so um you know boundary break the youtube channel boundary break he just did a twilight princess episode again <gasps> oh. he did like a live he, he kind of just did a live not a live stream but he didn't it wasn't quite as produced he was just talking about it mm-hmm. and he noticed that the um the the light box or the uh the world box the sky box essentially that surrounds all the environments has a bunch of extra filters on it, which I think gives the game that kind of bloomy, Mm -hmm. glowy kind of look. Cool. uh, Which is neat. So I also have Phil Epperson over here on Facebook uh, said, quite a while back, actually, back in April, but I wanted to mention this. He said, hey guys, I'm listening to the recipes episode on Patreon right now. Kate mentioned Googling recipes and it rung a bell. I don't know if you know this, but someone actually put a Breath of the Wild cookbook together. So you can either (laughs) actually make the food from the game. I wonder if they negate the need for a jacket. Oh, oh, that's awesome. I'm going to Google it and mention it on our next episode. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so like real life food. like Yeah, I think they translated. Sauteed. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. No, it's me. It's all me. <laughs> so like sauteed vegetables or mushrooms and, and hearty, <laughs> hearty whatever it is. Like how, you, how can you make an equivalent of that in real life? Apparently, which is super cool. Huh. Another Zelda podcast is over on Twitter, Mr. Goobermania, and then we'll get started with our episode here. Um, Just listened to your Regaining Hearts episode, and it reminded me of when I was playing Breath of the Wild with my five- and six-year-old boys, and I was low on hearts near Goron City, and they said, Dad, go into the hot pools. I was amazed (laughs) that they figured that out when they were playing without me. Oh, my gosh. Me, right? That's funny. And that's not the only game that you can do that in. So I wonder if those kids had seen other games. Well, if they're only five or six, Breath of the Wild might be their first game, first Zelda game. Yeah. But still, it's it's great how that's, again, it's families playing together and, you know, learning secrets and sharing the secrets. Maybe they just feel like their hearts have been regained after a nice bath. So they're like, that's probably a good idea, Dad. <laughs> have Link take a bath. Um, so I will do two iTunes reviews too, actually. I just decided and then we'll actually get into this. Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, over on iTunes, uh, we have a bunch of five-star ratings. It's so wonderful and so beautiful that people are compelled to uh, acknowledge us over there. It always helps us get higher on the charts, on the search engines in iTunes, and more and more people can find us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, over here, uh, we have a review called Great Podcast, Stricker... Harder22 back in May said, This show is such a joy to listen to. I'm a huge Zelda fan, and I'm even learning new things about the franchise by listening to you guys. Your energy is awesome and keeps me coming back for more. Thank you for the awesome content and you put that you put out on a regular basis. Congratulations on one successful year, and I can't wait to hear what happens in the many years to come. Aww. Oh, very nice, right? Uh, sh- uh, Shark9213 here said, 
I first listened to your podcast when I briefly met you at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Oh, I cool. since went back and listened to every episode from the beginning, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I look forward to more goodness for my ears in the future. Oh, goodness for the ears. That should be our tagline. <laughs> That's the season three. That's what it's going to be. It's not going to be, it's a secret to everybody. It's going to be goodness for your ears. Goodness for your ears. Mm-hmm, indeed. Shark9213, thank you so much. Thank you. Kate, let's get into this episode. All righty. So, yeah, favorite non-dungeon dungeons. What makes a non-dungeon dungeon? I don't know. I have a mixture of of places and activities and mm-hmm. places where you can do different activities and well just like Beck Phillips said I think a classic example of a non-dungeon dungeon is the ice cavern in Ocarina of Time well then mine are probably gonna be thinking outside the box a well little mine are bit. definitely outside the box too in fact I almost was like as I was coming to the episode I was like I think I have one non-dungeon dungeon and everything else is honorable mentions because I don't think they fit so let's just open this up yeah I mean it's our rules right so mm-hmm. who cares um do you want to go over these in a specific order nope. or just kind of whatever let's free flow this all righty so it'll be like a, it'll be a favorites episode okay cool so I see as opposed to like a top Top 10 ranked ones. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, so I guess I'm going to start off with, oh, surprise, the ice cave in Ocarina. Let's do it. Time. Yeah, I agree. I know that's kind of a, uh, a cop out because that was mentioned in the suggestion, but I do like that level. Um, it's I one of too. those when I replay the game, I don't go, ugh, blah, blah. like um, bottom of the well is kind of one where I get to it and I'm like, ugh, ugh, yep. I don't want to do this. But um, the ice cave... You, even just getting to it is kind of cool as long as you don't get super frustrated by the icebergs. Um, it's like a little mini challenge just to get there in the first place. It's not just climb up the side of the wall and go into the ice cave. So you have to oh yeah jump over the little um, icebergs, some of which are spinning around. You can go get um, a piece of heart that's on one of the icebergs too. Mm-hmm. So that's like a little side thing that you can do. And then after jumping, which when I first started Playing this game as a younger kid, I had so much trouble with that part. I remember being really tough too. We talked yeah. about this a few episodes ago. It was easy on our last playthrough. Yeah, yeah. Had no problem why. this time, which, yay. Um, so <laughs> I had a lot of trouble in the past. So you you hop over your little icebergs, and then um, I just like that it's a mix of different things that you have to do, right? So you have the block puzzles, yeah. which um, can be frustrating. Um, I was, we were actually talking before we started recording about the Mario and Rabbids Switch game. Yeah. I just started playing that. That game also has a lot of block puzzles, but the difficulty is not that high, at oh. least in the beginning of the game. They're getting progressively more and more difficult. We had to slide them around and hit switches and do all this stuff. So that's that's part of that game. And sometimes those block puzzles can be really frustrating, um, and when I first played the ice cave, I think I was frustrated because there are those places where they can fall down the hole. So it's not even <gasps> just, yeah. it's not just like move them around to hit these things and then go on a switch. It's like, Oh crap. My, just my block fell down the hole. Time like, to start over. Time to start over. And then, you know, there's the timed one, um, towards the end of the ice cave where you have to do it in a certain amount of time. You have to collect the silver rupees a couple times yeah. in the ice cave. Yes. Um, so that's another element. And I and I like that in um, Ocarina of Time. That comes up a lot. I've, again, this Mario Rabbids thing is kind of the same thing. Interesting. Um, where you have to collect red coins within a certain amount of time. So that kind of thing I like, kind of mini scavenger hunts um, where they're challenging but not incredibly difficult. <clears throat> I do think the ice cavern... If you're not paying attention, you accidentally think you're in a dungeon sometimes because it, it does have the map and the keys and the doors. Uh-huh. And I remember as a kid kind of considering it almost a dungeon and then you, and then all of a sudden you're done and you even get an item in there and everything. You do. So yeah, towards the end. And the other thing is the, um, the reason I don't think it's a real full-fledged dungeon is there's no real boss. There's the wolf at the end, yeah. but he's really not difficult to beat. And then you get the iron boots after Maybe. that is what you get. Maybe if there isn't a boss, then it's not a dungeon. Anyway. I mean, there's kind of a boss, yeah. which is that white wolf at the end, but it's not hard at all. And I almost kind of wish it was more difficult because then you just go in there and you're like, you know, slash, 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 kill the wolf. Okay. These boots. Like, <laughs> in the magical rainbow room. Yeah. In the magical trippy light room. room. Yeah. Um, no, that's a great, yeah, you're right. It's not rainbows. It's, it's like sparkles. Um, that's a really good point about the quote unquote end boss in that thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that wolf is not using any additional 
traditional logic or programming, the way maybe a boss would have certain patterns to recognize. It's really just amped up, normal logic, Wolfos fight. Yep. Yep. Which is like, you get there and you're like, what is this place? Oh no, what's going to happen? Oh, that's it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Boots! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So um, I like that one. It's it's um, also you have the fire elements where you're catching the fire in the bottles and then yeah. melting the fire around treasure chests and I think jars. Um, there are a couple gold sculptula guys in there um, that you can get. That's right. Um, so it's just like a good mix of fun things to do in like a smaller, you know space a smaller look kind of mini level mm-hmm. so i i like it and i'm glad that was one of the suggestions because i'm like that totally counts i like that one yeah as as the springboard for the inspiration for the topic i think that absolutely lines up um in fact as we're speaking about this ocarina has a lot of those little things and if we talk about each of them that's fine with me i know we just got done talking about ocarina about four or five episodes ago mm-hmm. but um um certainly the well is another one of those but i think the ice cavern is a great place to start off and it is you know it's I do remember the entrance being very not dramatic. It's just like a sliver in the side of the wall. Yeah. And you're almost like, am I supposed to go in here? Yeah. It looks too short. Yeah. Right. It does. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Is this like a weird Willy Wonka door? What's happening? And then you go in there and it, it is much bigger. Um, cool. Yeah. I don't know if I have too much more to say about that because we kind of spoke about it recently. Mm-hmm. And that is actually my only one from Ocarina of Time. What? So, yeah. I mean, if... if you I can switch it up, and why, why don't we go over to A Link to the Past? I have one here, yeah. and I know that you and I are still, Kate and I, we are still uh, only only halfway through that game. Yep. We will get to it. Oh, boy. Maybe it's our finale for season two. Maybe we like <laughs> to make ourselves go for it. Power through. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's our finale. Um, uh, um, 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 oh, right. So, uh, but based on just based on our knowledge of what we've played so far, I can't help but mention the castle right in the beginning. Ah, yes. You get a map, there are keys, all of that to kind of teach you how that stuff works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I do know that um, you've spoken to the beginning of that game and how in some games, Zelda games or otherwise, if the game throws you right into the action in the beginning, that's a little less cool for you. You're kind of like warming up. And I think I agree, you know? Yeah, I like a a, a somewhere between spelling it out for me and just throwing me right in there. I like something in the middle where I kind of have to figure out some things for myself, but also it's at least a little bit like trained even rather than explained. As long as I'm kind of introduced and trained through it, that's what I prefer. That's a good point. If there's, if there's a game hypothetically where you need to learn how to use a bow and arrow in the first 10 minutes of the game and there's a character taking five paragraphs to tell you to say this is how you use your bow Mm -hmm. aim up aim down blah 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 then push this button oh that's the worst yep and then in in you know another version of that is uh narratively they'll throw you into a huge boss battle in the beginning any game and it's basically the same thing you're not actually in danger there's an illusion of danger Mm -hmm. and um it's actually the you know the same character as being like, watch out, you gotta go use the arrow on that humongous monster that's <laughs> wailing around and flapping around, but yeah. you're not actually it's actually really just the same poor choice. It just feels more exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The best is when you're given the arrows hypothetically in any game, and you're uh, enabled to just kind of say like, well, maybe I'll try shooting that thing. Maybe I'll try. Oh, this is how I do this. Oh, maybe I'll try shooting that thing. Mm-hmm. So I agree. I think. Um, I think sometimes starting a game off with a lot of action, uh, maybe this is a little too aggressive, but can kind of be like a cheap device to 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 make people get hooked in. Right. But also narratively, you know, it can really get your it can get your blood flowing a little bit. I get it. I get it. <laughs> too much. I have anxiety. I will admit, you know, um, four or five episodes from now, we're going to be doing our first Zelda like review we're going to be reviewing beyond good and evil mm-hmm. and i do think the beginning of beyond good and evil starts with a little bit of high action I oh just no <laughs> it's not too bad it's not too bad it, I, I sorry I, th- I think a lot of games do start off that way a majority yeah. seem to go that route i think what it is is they need to get the player excited and invested in the story in the first hour or two where maybe back in the 90s it was a little bit more acceptable to just roam around for three hours mm-hmm. you know um definitely beyond good and evil slows down r- very, very quickly and lets you just explore. But anyway. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, I, I remember liking the... the oh, that initial... was a real diatribe there. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We're talking about the castle and I think... You know, past. that thing. Uh, no, I, I like that part too. Um, I liked 
going in there and I think it wasn't like the lantern part of that right away. You get the lantern well. right away. Yeah. So that was another cool, like a little additional thing that you got to learn and that became part of the puzzles too. And I remember not being like, Oh, this is just immediately too hard. It wasn't anything like that, but it was like, Oh cool. Like I'm, I'm using my brain to figure this out already. That's a good idea. I mean, that's a good point. You're right. You're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little difficult. Like the actual nights are a little, you're learning the new, like they they aren't just fodder. They no, are, you they want to murder you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember dying a few times when I first got started. I was like, oh, oh, this is not Kakiri Village in uh, Ocarina. Uh, uh, no, those <laughs> residents are not friendly <laughs> at I was, all. I felt it did feel a little weird thematically. I was kind of like, I'm, am I hurting the good guys right now? These are the guys that work for Zelda. <laughs> They're possessed. Uh, <laughs> it's a little true. tricky in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely putting you in the thick of the action, but without like really freaking you out or thinking you're you're definitely in giant trouble Mm -hmm. right away certainly you learn about keys yep there's a kind of final boss without final boss logic it's the guy that has the big spinny spiky ball thing oh yeah that guy was really hard at first when i was figuring out Mm -hmm. that game there's a little trick um there's a couple pots in in the jail cell next to zelda Mm. just two pots to the face (laughs) and that guy goes down two pots to the face Uh uh-huh Oh, in front of my face. That's uh, that's true for just about anyone. It's two pots to the face. You're down. You're down. Down for the count. Mm-hmm. So you know it's pretty realistic. <laughs> so that was that was another one I could think of. What else? What did you have? And then maybe we'll go to break after this and then and then dig in after. Sure. Uh, my next one is. I mean, tell me if you think this is a crazy pick or if it doesn't apply. But um, I chose the like wagon chase. Uh, scene yeah. slash mission in Twilight Princess. So I love that little mission. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I figure that's a non-dungeon dungeon, so to speak, because there are multiple things that you have to do. You can certainly die and have to start it all over again. It is not a side quest. It is not. It is you, you need to do it to, it to mm-hmm. advance the story. Um, so this is where you're trying to take the little kids and the, the Zora Prince, who is ill, from... Um, and Telma, she's driving the wagon from her bar to Kakariko Village so that they can save the prince. So the first thing you have to do is the battle on the bridge with the oh, Bokoblin yeah. on the boar. Oh my gosh, that's right. And that alone is a challenge. Like I remember having to do that a few times because there's you have to like swing your sword at the right. You have to you have to steer yourself on the correct side of this guy so he doesn't fling you off the bridge. And then you have to like slash at him at the exact right moment otherwise he'll get you mm-hmm, first. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to do that like three or four times until you actually knock him off. Like, I don't think it's just one done. I think you might be right. Um, or, or I'm misremembering just doing it wrong a few times. But well, anyway. and there are two times you have to do this kind of thing, I'm pretty That's sure. That's right, yes. Um, so once you get past that guy, then you have to do the wagon chase, so to speak, um, through high road field. So the wagon's going here and there and everywhere. And I don't think there's a... Sometimes it just like zooms off to the right and you're like where are you going because if there are enemies coming it'll get away from those enemies and go off the path and then like circle back onto the path i think it's one of those things where there's a a programmed path and then the artificial intelligence of the wagon is programmed to it'll override that path if there's a it probably has like some sensors out there and if there's a threat coming Mm -hmm. it'll steer away and then find the path again and so that's a really great example of, of helping it feel it's not just randomly out there in the field running around right. riding around it feels motivated and it feels like the choice Talma would make to to avoid these things right and I felt that that was very organic organic so every time you play it it is just a little different it's a little different and it can be a little frustrating for that reason because all of a sudden it just zooms away and you're like ah and you have to you have to uh, kill the enemies. You have to prevent the wagon from being set on fire. Yeah. I think when it does set on fire, you can use your boomerang to put out the fire. Makes from sense. What I remember. Um, it's very possible. And then I'm just reading my notes here. So mm-hmm. it's it's. Oh, you have whiteout on your notes. It's adorable. I had to start over. No, I mean it. I picked one and then I and I was like, no, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> no, that is not condescending. I haven't seen whiteout in years. Eh, well, I this work is... in an office, so it's readily available. <laughs> I okay, may cool. have been writing notes on this podcast instead of working. We speak job. not of it. Yeah. Uh, so um, so it's doable but challenging, which is the general theme of, I've you know brought this up on other episodes, that's the general theme of what I like about these games and games in general is when they're, 
there it can be done, but it might take a couple times. It's not going to frustrate you. You're not going to throw your controller across the room if if you know you have to start over because it's not starting over from scratch or for an hour's worth of stuff oh, that yeah. you have to do all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've definitely had to start this one over before, and I remember being a little frustrated, but you know, it's it can be done. Yeah, but to that point. You know, starting it over, I think I recall the first time I played back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I had to do it a couple times myself. And, but I enjoyed it every time. Um, How how do I say this? Uh, So sometimes when you and I speak about Breath of the Wild, certainly I like to celebrate um, like systematic, systematic systemic ways to do things. And I think you enjoy that too. It's like, oh, you approach the problem however you want. Mm -hmm. Um, um, In Twilight Princess, okay. So uh, the way to accomplish something in Breath of the Wild is very systemic and you can do it a million different ways and it's going to be different every time and the characters are going to react different. Okay, cool. Let's go to the other end of that spectrum and I can't help but think of like quick time events in Resident Evil 4 back in the day Mm -hmm. and, and, and then many other games after that where... It's the opposite of systemic. It is literally just recording. It's almost Simon. It's almost the game Simon. Mm-hmm. Like now, remember to push B. Now remember to push A. And oh, maybe it was Z this time, just to to, to to you know to keep you on your toes. But that is, if you have to redo a quick time event, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. And it's like, come on, I just didn't memorize a thing in the right. I'm totally removed from the narrative. Um, if you have to redo a systemic thing in Breath of the Wild, you're like, okay, cool, let's do it again. Uh, maybe I'll try something a little different or mm-hmm. maybe an enemy reacts a different way. So it's a new experience, even if you have to start over. The reason I'm kind of laying out this spectrum here is that in Twilight Princess, this mission um, is, especially for its time, it is a systemic mission. Um, it is not a quick time event where you just have to. Mm-hmm. There's a, there, So it's a rescue. It's not a rescue mission, but it's a keep safe mission. And yep. there, that happens in games a lot. Sometimes mm-hmm. in, a, in a lesser game, it's like, Man the gun turret and shoot all the planes coming at us because we got to get out of here. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And that becomes like an on-rail segment. This is almost on-rails, you know, in that the 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 uh, wagon has a destination, but everything that's happening, the bad guys attacking, which way you do or do, you have full control of where the horse goes mm-hmm. and how you want to defend the the wagon. The wagon has a certain amount of artificial intelligence. And so if you do have to repeat it, it's not a slog. You're not like, okay, I got to remember the first two minutes again and do it exactly the same. Right. Um, it's a whole new experience. And I found myself never being frustrated with that wagon chase. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, you just reminded me of like playing God of War, which is when you're like, oh, I have to press the square oh, yeah. button when it tells me to press the square button and the triangle and stuff like that, which it yeah. wasn't as bad because it was still interesting enough. But yeah, that, that kind of thing where you have to do that over and 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 over again is very frustrating. So this one is different. I like the theme of this list is going to be um, pretty much after the ice cavern are things that are just a different mechanic or something kind of outside the oh, Zelda formula. Fascinating. Yeah. Cool. Well, I have another castle when we come back from break. And so let's go to break and, um, uh, oh, oh, I've almost, I'm so, Kate, I'm so used to hosting right now because I've had to oh. host all these Midwest <laughs> how, gaming things. How dare you I'm take so the sorry. break I just took it from you. <laughs> I'm so offended. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm quitting this podcast here and now because you took away my break announcing privileges. I want the credit. I, <laughs> you know what, Dave? Let's go to break. Oh, sounds good. Okay. Oh, what a surprise. Sure, of course. I'd love to go to break. Okay, bye. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a half a minute here to tell you a little bit about another Zelda podcast's Patreon page. We set up our Patreon account about halfway through Season 1, and the support that we've received over there has been humbling, to be honest. Uh, I'll just get right down to the details. We are basically offering three different tiers for um, anyone who wants to support another Zelda podcast. We have the Sword Tier, the White Sword Tier, and the Magical Sword Tier. We are very proud of ourselves for coming up with those three tiers. Um, Essentially, 
the sword tier allows people to just say thank you to another Zelda podcast, get, get a little bit of recognition on the website. White Sword uh, offers some uh, additional content, bonus content, extra extra episodes, little little half episodes that we put out, and um, also all episodes come out a week early with a little bit of commentary on the top and no ads. So you will not be hearing this <laughs> on a Patreon file. We also finally have our magical sword tier, which has all the other things added into it and also access to an elite Discord channel that we run, which allows us to have a very personal connection with the uh, people of Patreon. To be honest, I have a lot of fun recording the little intros that I add onto the episodes and also putting together some of these. Well, we, you know, if we interview someone, sometimes we'll put the uncut interview on our Patreon page. I joke sometimes it's almost like what special features were on DVDs way back in the day. That's what we offer on our Patreon account for the White Sword level and the Magical Sword level. All right, like I said, I don't want to waste too much of your time here. Go check it out at patreon.com, another Zelda podcast. You can also find links and uh, a list of our current supporters over on anotherzeldapodcast.com. Hey, my name is Max. And I'm Jordan. And we're here to talk to you about a little show called the Top Hat Balloon yeah, Show. Yeah, the Top Hat Balloon Show comes out every week. It's a sketch comedy show. You can see sketch comedy. And other kinds of things. You can subscribe to us on YouTube or iTunes, or visit our website at tophatballoonshow.com. You're sure to have a hilarious time. Click the link in the description. And we're back. Hello. Wow. We're back. That was great. <laughs> Welcome back to another Zelda podcast. We are today talking about our favorite non-dungeon dungeons. Mm-hmm. And so far we have talked about the Ice Cavern in Ocarina of Time. We've talked about the opening castle level in Link to the Past. And I've talked about the wagon chase kind of scene, whatever you want to call that, from Twilight Princess. So uh, you are up next, Dave. For your well, next it was tricky. And I don't, I don't think I have as many as you do here. I see that you've got about four left on your notes there. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Um, uh, you know, it is tricky. I was thinking about some things in Majora's Mask. I was thinking about all of the kind of like sneak around the guards things that happen mm. always feel pseudo dungeony to me. Mm-hmm. Um, in Minish Cap or even Majora's Mask, there's there's like you're sneaking around not the castle, but you're sneaking around the Deku area. You're mm-hmm. going in and out of things. Um, they all feel. Uh, uh, I was th- when I was thinking about, it, I was like, "Gosh, is that a non-dungeon dungeon? Is that a non-dungeon?" And are we talking about stuff that's specifically indoors? You know, it's it's a little tricky. And so we all agreed that we're not going to get too caught up on that. We all, all two of us, yes. agreed that we're not going to get caught up on that detail too much. Uh-huh. Um, but my next uh, submission or our reference here is. I think definitely in the spectrum of something that's indoors that feels like a dungeon, and I can't help but think about Canalette Castle in Link's Awakening. Uh huh. Okay. In fact, so much so that when I was a kid and I was playing the game, I remembered it as a dungeon. You might recall it's the one where you have to get the leaf and the monkeys help you build a bridge and you get in there. And mm. uh, he, you have to retrieve like five different pieces of an item that help uh, Prince. Oh, I forgot his name. It looks oh. like you're Googling. I, I'm not, I'm not yep. going to judge you if you don't remember. I can't remember his name. name. I can't Prince something. Most of the um, names. He's got swoopy hair, and then he helps you get an item. He helps you get the key that then brings you to one of the dungeons. Gotcha. But Canalette Castle, also most famously, it's been seen in the new Link's Awakening trailer for the Switch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming, yep. coming around now. And it's reminiscent of the Link's Awakening, or Link to the Past Castle, in that it has a second floor to it. And ooh, what are you looking at? So I made a face just now because the the screenshot example of Canalette Castle is from the Link's Awakening remake on oh. Switch. <laughs> it's not even the original version of yeah, it. Yeah, that's all right. Funny. That's all. I just oh, thought that okay. was amusing that that's like the reference picture is from the the game that hasn't come out yet. For something that's not a dungeon, it takes up a lot of tiles on the map. It takes up almost nine tiles. Mm-hmm. Do you recall much about this little castle? I'm trying to refresh my memory. Yeah. So okay, the bananas to Kiki. Right. Yep. Right. Right. You okay. have to sneak around the side of the castle. Um, the monkeys build you a bridge, and you go down a hole and sneak under the ground, and then come back up, which is really reminiscent. Of A Link to the Past's castle right in the beginning. Mm, yep, it's slowly coming back to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prince Richard is that that's was the name it. That Richard, you're trying to Richard. Think of. <laughs> Richard. Of all the names, like in the Zelda universe, Prince Richard, really? <laughs> like a normal human being name? Okay. Um, his whole. 
his whole his whole thing takes up a lot of tiles on the map because you technically go to this garden to dig some stuff up with your shovel to get mm-hmm. some stuff to get maybe that's the bananas I can't even recall now to get something to get you to the castle and then you're inside the castle and you're going around and there's a second floor and you definitely come out on the roof of the castle and go back into the castle mm-hmm. and if you're not careful you think you're in a dungeon cool yeah I totally think that applies mm-hmm. and it even says a mini dungeon in, oh. in uh, the Zelda wiki. So I think I, I think you have been approved for this selection. <laughs> I have an honorable mention. In Oracle of Seasons, there is a an enemy base that you infiltrate, uh, and it's in its fortress esque. Mm-hmm. It's shooting a bunch of cannons out, and it definitely has keys and doors. And I can't remember; it's not in my notes. I just remembered now because I was thinking about the Game Boy games. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll do a little bit more research on that. But there's definitely a like six tiled fortress that you have to infiltrate that that feels like a dungeon. Sometimes I feel bad or kind of weird in preparing for these episodes because I'm like, well, you know, it's not fair. I haven't played all the games, so I'm sure there's something that people are like, this is my favorite non-dungeon dungeon and I don't even know about it. So... I mean, maybe this is something that we can revisit after we've played more of the games. But Yeah, I do feel like some of this revisiting is inevitable a couple seasons from now. Mm-hmm. Um, but the greatest thing about this is that whenever we don't include a particular uh, topic or uh, item in a topic that we're talking about, a lot of times we do have listeners that do not scold us. They actually just say, like, that's great. Also, this one was right. great. Yeah. And it's such a nice experience to hear that as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, give, definitely give us your thoughts after after you hear all our choices here, because I'm sure yeah. there'll be stuff that I don't know about. I did um, try to think of stuff from The Adventure of Link, and I did try to think of stuff from the original The Legend of Zelda. It, I was hard-pressed, honestly. Yeah, I think in those early games, I mean, the dungeon was the thing. Like, that was mm-hmm. the Zelda thing to do. And there's there's always exploring, too. But it was kind of like you're either kind of wandering through the forest or the field or the area, what have you, and then you get to the dungeon. So there's right. not a lot in between that necessarily. I agree. Things here and there, but not, I, I don't think, super common until more oh, of the console games. boy, is that fascinating. It almost, games. it almost makes you wonder. Sorry, I was just a stream of thought here. It almost yeah. makes you wonder if in something like Ocarina, if the well, if the ice cavern, if um, there's even a couple others I, that I'm forgetting about right now, if maybe they were originally going to be full dungeons because mm. they're built with that structure. They, mm-hmm. they, they switch their map over and everything when you go into them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to say Ocarina ran out of time. It's a fully formed game. I, and I know that in the history, there was no talk about them running out of time with Ocarina, uh, whereas Majora's was like a really quick game they had to put together very fast. Mm-hmm. Um it just kind of makes you wonder a little bit, like, oh, I wonder if that if these would if they got if they got snipped a little bit, and you know, and they're only half of a dungeon, kind of like some of the ones that are at the end of Twilight Princess, perhaps. Sure, I, I, I had to smile earlier because I was imagining the game being actually called Ocarina Ran Out of Time. <laughs> I don't know, made That's me great. made me inside giggle. Mm-hmm. Um, you should do stand up. No, uh, <laughs> I had kind of a, not a similar thought, but a thought about just like, would any of these be considered non-dungeon dungeons of like the, the islands in Wind Waker? You know, like how many of those islands are? So I, that's great. I'm so happy you brought that up because I feel like the water, the, the fire and the ice one are, are little mini dungeons. I thought about those. Um, I wasn't sure whether to include those or not, but um, yeah. maybe they were maybe my favorites, but they may, you know, be in the running or whatever. I would maybe say for other sure. People's. Actually, yes. I didn't even have that in my notes, but I love that you were going in that direction. Yeah. Because do you get keys? You definitely unlock a door at the end of each of those. I think you get... Maybe it's a button. You never know. You get something. You get some kind of item or or something like that, but... That allows you to get to the you end. You need to, get the to stuff. do them, mm-hmm. and I know that much. Yeah, I don't know if there's a map that changed, but Wind Waker doesn't kind of work that way. I don't know if it has. Oh, it does have dungeon maps, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I would Wind absolutely Waker's include weird. those. Um. Well, I will go to my next one. Actually, why don't I do one from Wind Waker since we're talking about that anyway? <gasps> and so some people might consider this a dungeon. I don't know, but I chose the castle beneath the sea in Wind Waker. I'm into it. And I don't consider that a dungeon because it's more of like an enemy gauntlet, kind of. I mean, you're in this big open castle area, also really cool, like all black and white and gray at first. It's yeah, really awesome. Very cool. And then all these enemies come to life and it's just like kicking butt for in one big room. So I don't know for that reason if I would consider it a dungeon because you're not really like 
going through tunnels and unlocking doors. You do go down to the basement at one point, and there's like a little block puzzle there. Yeah, but that's it. Well, like, yeah, I think one of these little if it's if we're going to include fire and ice and and even some of these other things, I think this can fit in this conversation for sure. I hope so. It was one of my picks. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, so I I always really like the transition from the black and white to the color. Like artistically, it's really cool. I like just being able to after a while in Legend of Zelda games, just button mash and and kick butt and destroy yeah. the enemies and get a bunch of rupees and and all that stuff that you can get after you defeat them all. Um, I really like going down to get the sword and then um, seeing all the stained glass windows. That's a really cool Docarina thing. Ocarina references, too. is that what you're talking about? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All the characters uh, from Ocarina of Time and their stained glass windows. Um, so to me, that's a non-dungeon dungeon because, I mean, you're still... It's still integral to the story. You're still having to uh, fight your way out of there, but it's just kind of more cool looking mm-hmm. than anything. No, I'm into it. I think one of the things I remember the first time that I went into that castle, um, you're already kind of you're going down there and you're starting to put together that this is Hyrule, original Hyrule, and you're mm-hmm. getting pretty excited about that. And then you go into the castle and. This is one of those things that's kind of cool about the game being cell shaded is that everything is black and white, but you're kind of like, is this, is everything statues? Everything's frozen. Are mm-hmm. these stone statues? Um, cause it's creepy. Cause mm-hmm. it, there, there is not, there is not violence happening, but there are characters in attack poses mm-hmm. and it can trigger you a little bit of like, Oh, that's a, Oh, yeah. that's a scary thing. Or I shouldn't go over there. And you're like, no, it's all frozen. It's okay. It's all frozen. But you just have that feeling. You're like, this is. This is not going to stay like this for long. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very cool that way. Um, it has a nice emotion to it. And when you come back up and everything does start unfreezing, there's a moment of a little bit of panic and then you get excited and then yep. you just got to fight your way through it. And those are not all easy enemies either. Mm-hmm. You're right. um, a lot of big bad ones. So um, it's not it's it's not terribly difficult. Um, I don't remember ever having like a s- super problem with it, but right. um more just a cool challenge and a cool part of the story that I really like and a cool like mini mini chapter yeah that um, is you know where the game kind of turns when you get your master sword and I really liked it well on that vein then in that vein um, let me offer one that I think I don't know if this one counts or not but like we keep saying who cares or like I keep trying who cares? to I can't get past it I'm like oh, I don't know if it counts or not I, know. <laughs> I just gotta get over it um, um, I'd like to maybe it's an honorable mention I'd like to throw out the uh the additional dungeon that's in Twilight Princess HD, if you use the um, Wolf Link Amiibo. Mm. And it's essentially an enemy gauntlet, but um, it's cool. I played it a little bit when we were, when we were uh, oh, I don't know, beginning of this season. And uh, there's not too much to say about it because there aren't too many puzzles. It is essentially enemy gauntlet, I will admit. But um, it's a, they call it a dungeon, and I don't even remember its name. I was going to say, can you, <laughs> can you remind me of its name? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Are you live Googling again? Googling. No, it's fine. It's fine. Cape of uh, so Shadows? What happens is, Does that sound right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you get down there as Wolf Link and you do a bunch of fighting. It's also a little bit Trial of the Sword feeling, you know, and, and also that this extra little dungeon in Twilight Princess HD was being built at the same time that Twilight Princess was being made. Hmm. Yeah, I've never I've never done this because I mm-hmm. didn't have the Amiibo or anything. You get little so. keys. If you ever download the HD version, I did get, I, I, I randomly accidentally found the wolf amiibo before ever even downloading twilight princess hd i just saw it at like a random best buy a couple years ago (laughs) and i kind of knew that i should probably pick it up i knew oh this one's out of all the amiibos this one definitely like it actually brings wolf link into breath of the wild which i do often which is a lot of fun oh cool um um i i kind of i don't have a lot of amiibos or anything like that but i was like i feel like this one's worth it and so i picked it up and then a year or two later, when I downloaded Tri- uh, Twilight Princess HD, I was like, I wonder if this does anything. And I had forgotten about this dungeon. <laughs> uh-huh. And you do get keys, but you basically get keys by defeating enemies. And it's a bit of a gauntlet. But- yeah, yeah, I see that. And it looks like if you clear the floor and you already have the giant wallet, you get a colossal wallet, which can uh-huh. hold up to 9,999 rupees. Which is important. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I feel like, you know what? That's funny because I actually did not complete this dungeon. I've just kind of played around with it a little bit. Sure. And I do. It's true. That's that's very interesting because you have to have there be a reward at the end, but nothing that changes or breaks the game. Sure. It can't be like a new item. It can't be. It can't be necessary. Yeah. 
So they just give you a really, really big wallet. So I guess you get like it's a it's an illusion wow. of something that's special. But do you ever really need that much money in Twilight Princess? No. That's so funny. Um, I kind of chose a an enemy gauntlet as well for one of my like honorable mentions that we'll I'll just talk about now Let's do since it. we're on the kind of topic, which is the Savage Labyrinth in Wind Waker. What? Yeah. So that's like and I know there are enemy gauntlets are few among the games. This one is the one I hate the least. Okay. So I picked this one as like a like I said, an honorable mention. Um it is partly required as well because you need a Triforce chart and this is how you get it. Right. I remember this now. Yeah. So it's partly required and then you can go further if you want to. So I do like that, you know, you do have to do a little bit of it, but not so much that you're going to drive yourself crazy. But then if you actually keep going, um, you get a heart piece, I want to say, or Probably. like, you know, a reward that again is not crazy ridiculous, but still cool to get. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote sometimes again, you just want to do some butt kicking. And, and I remember <laughs> every level has like, you know, it's a classic enemy gauntlet where you start with the really easy guys. And then after a while, they're just like more and more different combinations of enemies. Mm-hmm. And so it's not necessarily like th- mindless, enemy defeating like at some points you have to be like okay i remember i have to use this uh, weapon against these enemies that tends to work best and then but there's also this other kind in the same room and so i need to kind of modify my strategy a little bit yeah so i just included that one um because it's i don't know it's i think they're fun to a degree i don't want to do a hundred levels of an enemy gauntlet by any means but i think this one's like 40 I don't cool. quite remember it. That's it was fine. like one of the smaller ones or one of the less <laughs> like 40. one of the, yeah, one of the less, less super frustrating enemy gauntlets. So that was mm-hmm. one of my, one of my honorable mentions. I did have one here that I was like, I think it's a little unfair, but I almost as a joke put down all of the shrines <laughs> in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. It was hard to think of one for Breath of the Wild because of that. Maybe the closest is like the, the, um, the labyrinths or something like that. Oh, sure. You know, where they're kind of a dungeon, kind of not. Yeah. But there aren't dungeons per se in Breath of the Wild. And so we, we've already had this conversation in season one. The, the shrines are the dungeons exploded into a bunch of little pieces and put all over the place. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. That's what it is. So that's why I think it's a little unfair, but, uh, but they definitely have keys and doors and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have chosen any of the labyrinths, even though I think they count because I don't really like them, to be honest. I will confess that when I did all three labyrinths, I had already um, downloaded the DLC. So I had that little map where it records where you go. Mm-hmm. The line. I don't, you Maybe you've played around with this a little yeah, bit now. Yeah. So when I did the labyrinths, I constantly was rechecking my map to because I had a little path of green to see where i had been so that i wouldn't get lost so i smart i don't know if that's cheating or not it was it's in game it's not you know what i mean but i I did use that feature for all three labyrinths i'll admit well that's cool yeah i actually just um checked that out i I was playing not that long ago i kind of picked it up again because it's awesome in the way that you can just do that you can not play for two months and then go play it again and find new stuff i concur um and yeah it was pretty hilarious to hear me dying Going back and like listening to <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You remember that comment we had from the listener in the season one? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just played it for Bill one time. I'm like, check this out. I died a whole lot. Like, listen, <laughs> it's like warp die, warp die, warp die, warp die, warp die, warp die. It's fine. Oh man. Oh, that's, that's, that is very funny to me right now in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I actually just did a labyrinth and I shocked myself by figuring it out on my own without looking at anything because i just i just stumbled upon it honestly okay um and it was fine but i don't really like them that much Mm -hmm. i don't know to Mm -hmm. me they're not that interesting but the when i first went into my first labyrinth i was kind of like okay it's a maze fine uh but then and i mean okay here's the thing when whenever you're playing a game and you kind of know what the next five to ten minutes are are going to be mm-hmm. it gets a little bit less exciting mm-hmm. so you're like oh here's a maze okay i'm gonna be running around this thing for 10 minutes but the one thing that saved the the labyrinths all three of them for me is that each one of them subverted my expectations just a little bit here and there there would be um a part of the labyrinth where you had to climb up over the wall a little bit and it didn't quite show up on the map like you couldn't quite see it because it was an elevation change or something Mm -hmm. or they would get a little clever with okay here's these ladders but guess what there's a ladder over here and if you really paid attention you could 
uh, navigate through these labyrinths in ways that did not seem obvious. And all of them required that, in my opinion. Right. Climbing so that was a, nice. Climbing through a weird hole in the wall yeah, that exactly. you couldn't see, you know, unless you look up at all the walls that seem kind of near the center area. Like, one of these has got to lead to the... I agree. So they force you to think out of the, outside of the of the maze. <laughs> I tried to get clever there for a second. Wow. Um, they funny. force you to think outside of the box. And when you do, then you can complete the maze. You don't have to just be maze master. You know? Ooh, that's going to be my name from now on. Yep. Call me Maze Master. <laughs> um, what else do you got? I have the Shipyard and Skyward Sword Ooh. as one of mine. Yes, so I agree. So this is kind of like a little playground roller coaster area. Mm-hmm. And then, so that's why I picked this one. Um, again, like I kind of mentioned before, it's, uh, it's a mechanic outside I think the general it's fun Zelda universe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there are mine carts in other Zelda games. That's kind of a theme. Um, so this one is like the mine cart race, which one of them you need to do. And then there's also like an optional one that you can do Absolutely. if you want. Um, you are using your Wiimote and tilting it to kind of lean into turns and you jump. And I remember having to do this a thousand times. Okay. <laughs> so this one did get a little frustrating after a while because it, it is kind of one of the things, those things where you have to memorize here. I turn left here. I go to the right fork. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that a little bit. Yeah. Because otherwise if you go the wrong way, it'll shoot you off a dead end or it will loop you back around in a circle again so that part got a little frustrating where you did have to memorize that but it was also something totally different you're like what what am i doing what is this in the middle of this game? i agree anytime so the india indiana jones uh the temple of doom is evoked in a video game i am all in i, <laughs> I love minecart esque I guess, expre- experiences, I almost said levels, but experiences, uh-huh. they are done better and worse in some games. This one I thought was a lot of fun and really cool. Yeah. The balancing thing was a little, I, maybe I was sour about it because I was kind of like, ooh, I really feel like you're just trying to tack on a Wii Motion thing here. That was a little bit, but I better get it because as you, because I think if I remember correctly, in one part, you have to go fast. So you have to keep your balance. And so I get it. It, uh-huh. it was worked in. It wasn't too gimmicky. Um, but overall, it was a really fun little thing to do. Yeah. I think you have to go fast because you have to like do a jump or something after that yeah. or something like that where, yeah, speed was important. Um, so then there's also the rickety coaster mini game. I don't think I did this, but I think um, I did actually. I think if, if it had tracks, I liked it. Sorry. I yeah, yeah. 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 No. And then you just get a heart piece from that. It's usually, you know, if there's something extra to do, you get a heart piece. So, mm-hmm. and that's for me, that's not something I often am trying to look for in any Zelda game. Like I am not the collect the heart piece type person. Yep. I'm not trying to, I'm not a completionist in that kind of way. Mm hmm. But um, and then there's also a boss kind of out of an, out of nowhere, the Molder Rock or however you say it, the Scorpion guy. Oh gosh, you're right. There's a boss in there. Yeah, and it's for no reason at all. But it's at least you know practicing a boss fight. Do you not? You don't get an item. You I just don't are able to continue. Thing. I, that part I have a hard time remembering right now. Yeah, I remember fighting that particular boss a couple times. Like outside of the gauntlet that you have to do oh. later, there's like one, and then you do it again. Um, but I I like that boss. I don't mind. I like the way that you have to blow the sand around and get it to pop out of the sand, and then yeah, you fight no, it that way. It's coming back to me now. Yeah, yep. that was. And cool. I don't mind that one. So, but yeah, I think the whole reason you're out there is just to be able to then access the sand ship after that or something yeah. like that. So it's like okay, there's no point. But you know, I got to ride a minecart roller coaster, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was yeah, fun. That was one of my picks. That's great. I might be out, I think. Be out. Oh, yeah. So I have one last honorable mention okay. then. Okay, cool. Um, and that would be snowboarding in Twilight Princess. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but, but this this thread on this episode has just navigated quite nicely, hasn't it? We've kind of done the gauntlets. Now we're moving into the action stuff. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, let's talk about snowboarding. I'm cool with that. Um, it's just something that it would... I would never guess that Link would be snowboarding mm-hmm. in a Legend of Zelda game. Yeah, but no, no, he's a cool dude with an attitude yeah. at that point. <laughs> so is Yeti. <laughs> is his buddy Yeti. So, That's right. yeah, um, this is another heart piece kind of thing. If you defeat both Yeti and Yetta, so this is obviously before you um, fight Yetta in her boss battle, but it's just a fun, weird side thing that you can do. I think the first race is necessary with Yeti. 
T to get to the house to or get something. to the house or yeah. to have him trust you or something like that. He's yeah. like, Oh, you need to race me. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, what is this even? Um, oh, and it's also funny cause his little snowboard is so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> his feet are like the size of the whole thing. I know. And it's, uh, you know, obviously they don't want you to fight him because he's a good guy, right? So oh, you see. have to gain access to this place somehow. How so do you defeat a good guy? You race them. You snowboard race them, obviously. <laughs> That's how I made all my friends. Yes. <laughs> and then the optional version or the optional part of that is uh, <laughs> Yetta, where then you can get the heart piece from that. But Hi, nice to meet you. Want a snowboard race? Yeah. Yep. Excuse me? It's the middle of summer. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Want to do nope. it anyway. So it. yeah, I just picked that one because it's definitely not a dungeon, but it's just kind of a weird little thing that you got to do and can do more of if you want. And something that is completely out of the realm of this makes sense to me. I'm into it. In the Zelda universe. But Too here we funny. are. I'm sure there'll be more and more and more of that in the future. <laughs> Because they're gonna run out of stuff otherwise. If we're if we're on the th- uh, if we're on the Twilight Princess thread, a little bit of that opening when you're Wolf Link in the uh, sewers and then going to meet Zelda for the first time that's, oh. that evokes a little bit of a mini dungeon to me. Sure, yeah, like especially the rooftop part too, yeah. where you're like defeating enemies and it's kind of maze like, but not really. It's like a pretty clear way to go, but you feel like you can at least explore it somewhat. Yep, totally. Um, so yeah, I guess cool. there. I guess the more we're talking about it, the more. Um, uh, choices there are so um, yeah a few things pop up yeah in your memory here and there well, yeah that's kind of that kind of applies so um if any of you listeners have ones that we didn't go over that you really enjoy definitely leave us a comment on our various things that you can comment on dave why don't you remind our listeners of all of those because i hate doing that oh sure yeah no problem well <laughs> this episode came from a listener on discord so you can find our discord channel through i think we have a link on our itunes and our twitter but really just go to another and i have a button there that'll send you off to sign up for our discord uh but also, uh, we get a lot of tweets and we get a lot of Instagram posts. So you can find us on Twitter at Another Zelda Pod and on Instagram, Another Zelda Podcast. And uh, also, of course, searching YouTube or Facebook for Another Zelda Podcast will get us get you to our respective pages and groups and all of that. Yeah. And I am on Instagram if you want to reach out to me like our commenter did that we spoke about earlier oh, yeah. in the episode. Um, I'm, I only take cat pics. So you can find me on there and add me and... Send me a message and we'll say hi and everything. And uh, that's about it. Otherwise, if uh, you want to talk to me specifically on Discord, you should um, tag me at Catertot. Yay, I think. Indeed. It's either Cater Tot or Cater Tot Yay. I'm going to check that while you're talking. Yep, no problem. I'm at Raptor Paint over there on Discord and Twitter and Instagram and all the rest. So um, oh, it's been interesting. There's been a lot of uh, conversations going on on Twitter right now, actually, that I. I'm going to derail us if I start referencing all of that right now. I think we should wrap this episode up. But you and I have been starting to get included in some of those conversations. Our personal uh, tags are our Raptor Paint and then some on Instagram. All right. Cool. Kate, I'm done. Let's do so, this. So, okay. So, oh, by the way, I'm Cater Tot on Discord. Cater Tot. Not Cater Tot Yay. That is other names. I got I to gotta be more like you and choose the same name for everything. You, but we, I'm not. we need a, like a Venn diagram for, I know. Uh, for your social <laughs> handles. I know. Okay, well, that's it for now. And the only reason that I hate doing all of that, what what you just did, is because I can't remember all of it. That's all. So that's okay. Thank I, you for I doing I only that. remember it because I have to type it into all of our graphics and all of our show notes and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, exactly. I'd forget to. All right. Well, this has been a fun episode. And uh, next time, we'll be talking about our favorite towns and villages. That's yeah. going to be a future episode. I think so. we're doing it as a top 10. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be cool. Um, so we'll be talking about that next. And thank you all for listening. And and uh, thank you, Dave, for joining me today. Oh, Kate, thank you. I I can't say... Can I say it? Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>